a nearby genetic marker, 99% correlated, only 1% of the time genetically recombining, and going from that piece of DNA to find the cystic fibrosis gene. It's only 1% recombination away, but 1% in the human genome is about a million bases, and in those ancient days, you could walk about 10,000 bases, and so to get across a million bases in steps of tens of thousands of bases was very difficult. So, um, this was this tedious, tedious process called chromosomal walking. I come from Brooklyn, you will appreciate, it's really chromosomal schlepping. <laughs> you would schlep across the chromosome, it took five years to isolate the cystic fibrosis gene, tens of millions of dollars, more than a hundred people. Who wants to be an ant in that army? And so, that was the point of the Human Genome Project, was that to really, you know, speed that up. But I get ahead of myself. Once you get to the gene, amazing things happen. You know, you, you find the sequence, and it looks like a very boring sequence, but of course, three letters here are deleted in the vast majority of patients with cystic fibrosis. You have molecular diagnostics available. You take the sequence, you put it in the computer, you compare it to everything that's ever been seen before. You say, aha, this protein looks like a, mem like a membrane uh, transporter. Congratulations, you probably found the transporter. And it's, it's just a wonderful thing. You get handed a hypothesis on a silver platter, starting with almost nothing. Just tracing families, find the gene by walking, sequencing, reading, comparing the computer. It's a great idea, except the schlepping part of, you know, five years of work and all this money. That and that alone was the purpose of the Human Genome Project was simply to make it the case that you didn't need an army, but that a good graduate student could do this in the course of, you know, a rotation in your lab, something like that. <laughs> you laugh, but that is actually the way it's going very quickly. Um, the answer is sure, very much. Before the Human Genome Project, the number of disease genes for which there was a molecularly cloned, which had been molecularly cloned, was about 70. I've ever spoken on with such a distinguished group of uh, compatriots, so it's a little bit uh, intimidating even, maybe. Um, I think what you'll see is what I'm going to do is <clears throat> tell you what's already in the clinic uh, from what some of the other talks you've seen, projections of what might make its way into the clinic. And in some ways, you might be surprised how much is in the clinic and how much more could be in the clinic if a few people would make the right decisions. I actually uh, chair a department that does uh, a, a lot of uh, diagnostic testing. It's a major financial activity for our department. And so usually when I give these kinds of talks, I'm trying to convince people to send us samples. Um, <clears throat> when I came into genetics, uh, even this banded chromosome analysis did not exist. We had just solid black or, or purple chromosomes back then. <clears throat> uh, but in by the uh, 70s, we started to have banding and then we started to have uh, uh, fluorescence uh, in situ hybridization, and uh, this really uh, links very directly to what comes uh, now. So at that time, we, here's a chromosome with a, a red uh, marker indicating a particular chromosome, and a, a green marker indicating a particular chromosome, and the red region uh, is for a region that's deleted on this chromosome and present on this chromosome. And so there was a situation in clinical pediatrics when you had children with various disabilities that you could guess a particular diagnosis and use a fish analysis for a particular region to confirm that diagnosis. Uh, more helpful, actually, but really performed uh, would have been uh, in, <coughs> an interphase fish. In the previous slide, you have metaphase fish, and you see the individual chromosomes. But now in interphase fish, you have the ability to now separate uh, two dots if there is a duplication of certain sizes. And in fact, <clears throat> though many of these duplications were not detected until we came to the next generation of technology, which is arrays. But so this would be a, a chromosome with a duplication compared to a normal chromosome. Uh, there's some uh, jockeying for uh, terminology in this field. Uh, we've used the term chromosomal microarray analysis, or CMA. A similar term is 
uh, array genomic hybridization. Both of these terms are attempts to imply the use of both uh, copy number arrays, array CGH, and SNP arrays. So the two platforms I'll show you are array comparative G genomic hybridization, or array CGH, um, and single nucleotide polymorphism arrays uh, used not for genotyping, uh, but for just determining regions where there's no heterozygosity.